So let's take a look at uh, momentum and impulse using a golf ball example. A 50 gram golf ball is struck with a club. The force on the ball varies from zero when contact is made up to some maximum value when the ball is deformed. Then back to zero when the ball leaves the club. Thus it is somewhat like the force time graph Assume that the ball leaves the club face with a velocity of 44 meters per second. Estimate the impulse due to the collision. So we gather our terms here, our givens. The mass is equal to 50 grams. The initial velocity, 44 meters per second. The initial momentum is zero because the golf ball is at rest. So we're going to estimate the impulse due to that collision. Well, all we need here is the definition momentum is equal to mass times velocity. The mass is 50 grams. The velocity is 44 meters per second. You'll notice we put this into SI units so that I wouldn't, didn't have to do anything with the, with the velocity. And we come up with a momentum final of 2.2 kilograms meters per second. So the next part of the problem says estimate the duration of the collision and the average force on the ball. So this now is where you start thinking about that bell curve. Think about what that bell curve was doing as the force increased to some maximum and then decreased and we had all that area under the curve. So now in doing this, assuming an estimate of distance the ball travels while in contact with the club is two centimeters. So we're going to estimate that due to the compression that occurs when that golf club hits the ball, that we have the ball compress about two centimeters. You know, a golf ball is only about that big around. I had some laying around here. Anyway, about that big around. And if you figure it compresses just a little bit, and we estimate if the ball is about two, four centimeters across, we're going to estimate two centimeters. So recall that the average velocity then is delta x by delta t. So we're going to use this as part of that under, understanding that compression. So therefore, let's move the terms around. The time, the duration, they're asking us for the estimate of the duration of the collision given that two centimeter estimate. That delta t then is equal to delta x divided by the average velocity. So delta t then is equal to delta x by the velocity initial. We don't need the final because we're only dealing on the initial side here. So 2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters divided by 22 meters per second. Okay, so we're looking at, you know, we're looking at the, um, the velocity that occurs, the average velocity that occurs, okay? So we come up with 9.1 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds is the amount of time that the ball compresses before it goes into decompression and flies off of the face of the club. The estimated average force then becomes delta P by delta T equals 2.2 kilogram meters per second divided by 9.1 times 10 to the minus fourth gives us 2.4 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay, so we're looking at 2400 newtons kilogram meters per second squared of force for that ball shooting off of the face of the club. All right, a car example. In a particular crash test, a one and a half times 10 to the third kilogram automobile collides with the wall. The initial and final velocities of the automobile are V initial minus 15 meters per second, V final plus 2.60 meters per second. Okay, so Minus 15 meters per second is the initial, 2.6 is the final. 
So if the collision lasts 0.15, 15 hundredths of a second, find the impulse due to the collision and the average force exerted on the automobile. So here's all of our givens, mass, velocity, initial and final, and the duration 15 hundredths of a second or 150 thousandths of a second, however you want to think about it. The impulse due to the collision and the average force exerted on the automobile then is calculated by first determining the, mo the uh, momentum. Okay, so the initial and final momenta of the vehicle are, we just use, it, it can't get any simpler than this. P initial is equal to mass times velocity initial. P final is equal to mass times velocity final. And we come up with a, and the momentum <coughs> initial is minus <coughs> 2.25 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. And final plus 0.399, <coughs> excuse me, times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. So now we can calculate the impulse, which equals the change in the momentum. So we go back to our average force times our interval, or delta T. And again, it couldn't be any simpler. We just take our two values, minus 2.25 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second, and combine it with plus 0.399 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. And we come up with an impulse momentum of 2.64 times 10 to the fourth kilograms meters per second. Okay, so this is not as difficult. We haven't gotten into the vector portions of this, but we certainly have gotten into the boundary value problems, initial and final. Find the average force exerted on the automobile. The initial and final momenta then were given. So we, we, that's what we calculated in the last part of the problem. So to calculate the force then, we take the solution so for the average force, delta P by delta T. We just solved for the delta P as 2.64 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. We divide it by the, uh, the uh, interval the problem told us that we had 0.150 or 15 hundredths of a second. We divide that into the numerator. We get an average force of 1.76 times 10 to the fifth newton. So this would be that average force. Remember, that's that rectangle that we looked at in the second uh, graphical problem uh, example. So if we look at what happens injury in cars, a force of about 90,000 newtons, 90 kilonewtons, which is about 20,000 pounds, compressing the tibia of your leg can fracture it, okay? Head accelerations of 150 grams experience for about 4 milliseconds, or about 50 grams for 60 milliseconds, are fatal 50% of the time. The threshold for the damage of skin, blood vessels, and internal organs can be estimated in an approximate way from a whole body impact data, where the force is uniformly distributed over the entire front surface area of your body, seven tenths to nine tenths of a square meter. So, you know, they're, they're going to take an average uh, whole body impact area, uh, mostly of your torso. If the collision lasts less than about 70 milliseconds, that's 70 thousandths of a second, a person will survive if the whole body impact pressure, force per unit area, is less than 1.9 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared, or about 28 pounds per square inch. Okay, so think about that, the, uh, a bag of potatoes on every square inch of that impact area. Death results in 50% of cases where the whole body impact pressure reaches 3.4 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared or about two bags of potatoes per square inch. So if we look at an example here, consider a typical collision involving a 75 kilogram passenger car, passenger in a car not wearing a seat belt, traveling at 27 meters per second or about 60 miles per hour. 
comes in con to rest in about one hundredth of a second after striking an unpadded dashboard. We go back to our relationships. The impulse is equal to the difference in the um, momentum before and after, after and before. Rearranging our terms, we end up with zero minus 75 kilograms times 27 meters per second. Okay, those are our final terms, and the duration is 10, uh, 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 one hundredth of a second. We get a value of average force then of minus two times 10 to the fifth newtons. So to determine the acceleration then, delta V over delta T, we have 27 meters per second, about 60 miles an hour, divided by that one tenth, uh, one hundredth of a second. We get 2,700 meters per second square of acceleration, which gives us about 280 times times the force of gravity. So imagine you sitting in your chair and you feeling the force of gravity multiplied by 280 times. If we assume the passenger crashes into the dashboard and the windshield so that his head and chest with a combined surface area of a half a meter squared experience the force, we find the whole body pressure of pressure defined as average force divided by the area approximately equal to 4 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. So this, for you health type uh, people, this gives you some idea of what goes on in a collision and the damage, the significant damage it does to the human body. So when we come back, we're going to start looking at the collisions.